So it's my pleasure to, uh, to present to you today a joint effort of four groups in, in Germany <coughs> uh, recruiting the largest uh, trial in elderly patients uh, with breast cancer that has been conducted so far. So the ICE study, the phase three study that uh, compared ibentronate with or without capecitabin uh, in patients being 65 years or older, having either node positive disease or high risk node negative disease, and to exclude those patients that are uh, too vulnerable to receive any kind of chemotherapy. We excluded patients with a high rate of comorbidities, and that was measured by the Charleston index. So the Charleston index below two, or two equal or, or below two means that these patients, that, that they are, have some uh, um, risk factors, but still um, are uh, feasible to get a kind of monochemotherapy. However, these are patients that were considered by the investigators of not uh, appropriately fit for, for receiving a conventional anthracycline uh, taxane based chemotherapy. So, um, uh, the conventional dose of capecitabin was used, and we um, allowed two uh, modes of application of ibentronate, either orally or, or as an IV application, and that was um, chosen according to the preference of the patient to find out which is the most appropriate uh, way of giving this, um, this bisphosphonate uh, to this patient. And the, the, the reason why we have chosen um, this backbone of ibentronate was um, mainly to avoid um, an untreated control. As usual, this is not very um, helpful in, in convincing patients to participate, but on the other hand, we believe that um, these patients are at risk for, for bone-related events anyhow, and, and also um, um, they're also at the time in 2004, when we started this, the trial, there was quite some evidence that uh, bisphosphonate in, in elderly patients uh, might prevent um, uh, uh, breast cancer relapses. So um, the 1,358 patients are very well balanced, and you can see here that this is really an elderly population with a median age of 71. Um, uh, one quarter of these patients were older than 75 years of age. 10% were, were somewhat frail uh, with, the, with the comorbidity index of two, and um, 15 to 17% of patients uh, showed that they have some, some reduced physical function and uh, um, some disabilities, and that was measured by the VES 13 score. Um, the tumor characteristic, as you can see, demonstrate that these are not low-risk patients. They all have some kind of risk. Um, but still, 80% of these uh, tumors were hormone receptor positive, and um, the most of these hormone receptor positive patients received aromatase inhibitors. Bone-related events, that means fractures, surgery, new um, osteoporosis, but not the diagnosis of uh, bone metastasis, were still frequent despite this preventive um, use of um, a bisphosphonate uh, and occurred in 25% uh, of the patients during this uh, median observation period of 25 years. Um, this was not um, different between the treatment arms, but you c uh, can clearly see that, uh, and this is known, of course, that um, uh, if patients were treated with an aromatase inhibitor, that bone-related events were, much, uh, were more frequent than in hormone receptor negative uh, tumors or tumors that uh, patients that were treated with tamoxifen. Uh, regarding the preference um, of the um, ibentronate uh, um, application, you can see that two-thirds of the patients have chosen the oral application, um, and that uh, remained stable throughout the two-year treatment period. Only very few patients switched. And um, of, of, of course, of importance, the mean time uh, on treatment um, is uh, quite comparable between uh, the two forms, uh, 20.9 months with the oral and 19.6 uh, months with the IV application. This is the primary endpoint of the, of the study, invasive disease-free survival. You can see that at three years, um, no, absolutely no difference between the treatment arm uh, was observed, whereas after five years, the, the curve seemed uh, slightly to separate with an absolute difference of 3.8% um, in favor of capecitabin, but thereafter, the curves are crossing, and therefore, um, the, the p-value uh, is 0.70, and um, so 
there's no statistically sig significant difference between the two treatment groups. And this is also the case uh, if you look into subgroups. Um, the most <coughs> interesting subgroup probably is the one with the hormone for the hormone receptor negative uh, tumors. Unfortunately, only 20% of uh, patients had a hormone receptor negative disease, so the power to show an effect here where the events are coming more, more uh, frequently and also more, more earlier, um, um, this, uh, the, there is no difference, but maybe there is a trend and this definitely leads uh, to the conclusion that uh, these patients have to be followed up further, as we know also from other Cape Sidibin studies that long-term follow-up um, of adherent, uh, after adherent treatment is necessary to, to see uh, these differences. However, um, in general, we can, we can observe that um, despite um, this uh, elderly age at randomization and at the time of uh, analysis, these, these patients were in median almost 77 years uh, of age. They had a very favorable overall survival, 88% at five years, and this clearly demonstrates that these patients have a, a sufficient life expectancy that they should be treated um, uh, uh, sufficiently and according, uh, according to the best options uh, regarding their breast cancer. And together with the um, uh, previously uh, presented result of CLGB49907, that was a study that compared capecitabine with uh, combination chemotherapy EC, CMF, and found, uh, especially for the hormone receptor negative tumors, uh, um, more benefit for the combination chemotherapy. Taking those, these two trials now together, uh, um, a combination chemotherapy is strongly supported, uh, even in patients that uh, have uh, a higher um, uh, age at diagnosis. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Gunter. Uh, may I start with the first question? Do you think this follow-up is long enough for patients with hormone receptor positive disease? I, I don't think so. We know that um, uh, in many trials, the, um, uh, the, the treatment effects in hormone receptor and positive disease occurs after five years. And, and actually, what, what, I, what I showed that the curves are starting to separating now is probably um, a signal that, that we definitely have to go for 10 year follow up to, to fully um, assess um, the, the, the benefit of, uh, of the treatment, but also to collect, of course, uh, late side effects uh, to, to have a, uh, an appropriate risk benefit um, assessment. Thank you. Great. Now, moving to questions from the room. If you're in the room, please wait for a microphone. Michelle, you got the first question as soon as you get a mic. spoken this morning. Um, I, d I actually have two questions, if I may. The first question is, um, traditionally, our elderly patients who have some, um, a little bit of frailty or comorbidity, have they not been treated sufficiently? And the second one is regarding your follow-up. You said you need at least 10 years, so are you planning to extend the study, the follow-up in the study? Yeah, at the, at the time when we, when we started in 2004, um, there was um, insufficient evidence on uh, the tolerability, for example, of uh, um, paclitaxel uh, in elderly patients. That, that um, uh, information is, is now more available and, and it shows that, that you can do it. But at that time, it, um, these patients were not treated. So these were patients that were not treated according to the usual standards um, of care that, that is uh, the case for, for younger patients. And to your second question, the, the study allows to, to collect uh, longer uh, long-term follow-up, so we will do this. Uh. Charlie. Charles Bankhead, MedPage Today. Um, the results would suggest that uh, the two uh, regimens did not differ. Would you be comfortable giving a patient just a bandronate? Well, as I said, uh, taking the CLGB study into account, which showed that uh, there was a significant um, uh, improvement uh, with EC or CMF. Um, I believe that's more the question is, is can, I, can I give this patient at least an EC or maybe even uh, an EC uh, uh, taxane um, uh, sequence, uh, then, I would, then, I would, then I would do this. So, so the patient has to be really unfit um, um, uh, before I, I, would, I would not give her um, the chemotherapy. Of course, this very much depends on the subtype. So the more aggressive the subtype, the more I, I will try to at least uh, somehow give the chemotherapy. Um, 
and how it gas to oppose. So maybe to some U.S. physicians, would these women been treated like this in the U.S.? I mean, without any chemotherapy? And the second question is, is abandronate having an anti-tumor effect? Well, in, in, if you look for in, in uh, epidemiological surveys, there, there's um, still a, a, a large fraction of patients that is not res getting uh, an appropriate uh, treatment. Even, even this includes even um, endocrine treatment where, uh, where sometimes uh, uh, physicians are reluctant to, to give uh, for such a long period uh, um, these hormones which have uh, cumulative uh, toxicity. So um, uh, there is uh, uh, still an under, under treatment. And regarding your second question, um, there uh, last year at this meeting um, a large um, meta-analysis by the Oxford group um, has been presented uh, showing that in clearly postmenopausal patients, that means patients above 60 years of age, there, there was a clear um, uh, preventive effect of uh, distant of uh, metastases, recurrences, but also uh, of um, death uh, after breast cancer. And that was according to all types of bisphosphonates. Hi, uh, Ed Sussman with the uh, Oncology Times. Um, uh, a, qu a question on, um, well, there are a couple questions in my mind on this, but one, um, how was the, uh, the two regiments tolerated? Um, the capecitabine was uh, given for the full six cycles in 83% of patients, and the two-year um, uh, bisphosphonate uh, period could be given to 75% of patients. So, so of course, there, there are patients that uh, either had to stop earlier due to various reasons, but also um, uh, there were maybe interruptions in the, uh, with the chemotherapy. And also, of course, we observed more um, uh, grade three, four events. I will show this in the main uh, presentation with the capsidabin, but there was nothing unexpected. Um, in general, it was, I believe, according to our medical perspective, we would say it, it was uh, acceptable tolerance in, in the majority of the patients. I'm a, I'm a little confused by your um, recommendation that uh, capecitabine can be used um, in this population. Are, is that based on the fact that it, it's tolerated rather than it's effective? Well, in metastatic disease, we, we are using it a lot as a, as a mono, mono uh, chemotherapy, and especially in elderly patients. Yeah, so so this is where it comes from. But in the in the for the advent or for early breast cancer, this study does not support to use it. Uh, there are other uh, a large uh, phase three studies for capecitabine. They were um, uh, more or less all negative, maybe with the trend. But but so currently. Uh, we don't have um, evidence to, to give this drug for early breast cancer patients any, at any age, actually.